Hey there, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and you're going to watch a video here where we cover how to use variables in AutoHotKey. It's done in V2. It's a very simple one. It's actually an extract from our Intro to AutoHotKey done in V2 course, which is a phenomenal course, and I'll put a link up to it here if you're interested. And um, I'm actually using it in a drip campaign to onboard people that are new to AutoHotKey. So if you're interested in that, when you sign up uh, for the newsletter or get a download from us, you'll get added to that drip campaign at some point. I'm still working on it, but it should be up soon. So enjoy this simple video. Again, this is just the basics, but if you're new to AutoHotKey, it it's very helpful. Our videos in this course are usually three to five minutes long, and they just walk you through things, baby step you through it. You don't have to be a programmer to learn AutoHotKey. That's one of the benefits of it. So if you're very interested in learning AutoHotKey, check it out. Cheers. So now, to start coding, we're going to go ahead and talk about some basics of AutoHotKey. One of the things that you're going to use the most will be variables. Variables is just like grabbing some value and assigning it a name so that later on, whenever I refer to that name, I'm referring to that value. And again, as the name implies, the variables can change it, its values very often. So you can have the script change the value of something specific, but always refer to that same name to always get the updated value, for example. It's just like references in Excel. So when you have this cell and you have a value there like a name, and later on you refer to A1, then you're referring to that cell whatever it contains at that point is exactly the same in programming. Now, what I'm going to show you is how you can assign values and how you can retrieve the values later on. So what we're going to do is go ahead and open up the script that we created at the beginning. We have here the single instance to make sure that it doesn't ask me over and over for the same information. I'm also going to make sure that it is always run with V2. And we have a message box here with some text. So let's go ahead and get rid of this comment here. We don't need it any, any longer. And let's start with variables. You can set any name you want for your variable. So let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and set up a name. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and talk about full name. So full name. Now variables can be any alphabet character underscores and some other characters, but you cannot use like a, a dot, for example, or a, a dollar sign. You cannot use special characters. It's just normal A, B, C, D, and your underscore. Now, to assign a value to it, you're going to use the colon equals operand. This allows you to set some value into a variable. And in this case, as I'm going to assign it some text, then let's go ahead and use quotation marks. Because anytime you're referring to literal text, you have to use quotation marks around it. So in this case, I'm gonna put my name here. That's my full name. Let's call age, the other variable. Let's put made a number. In this case, what I want to show you here is that we can set any numbers here. And when you're using numbers, for example, or expressions that we will see later, you do not have to use quotation marks. So in here, I could say, I don't know, I'm 35 or something like that. Now, if I have my full name and my age, I could go ahead and create a message box later, and I want to display those two things. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with full name here. Now, as you can see, my text does not have spaces in it. So I want to open up now a new text. So I'm going to show my name, I'm going to add new text, but in this text, I'm going to put a space, and then we'll say, um, your age is, I'm going to put a space right there, and now I'm going to show my age. That's it. Now, one of the other good things about using uh, an editor like this one is that you have some tools like this uh, tool at the top that allows me to run the script from here. I do not have to double click it, but before we run it, let's go ahead and make sure that site for our hotkey is configured to run with auto hotkey V2 because it defaults to V1 or, you know, the default usually is V1, but in this case, I want to run it with V2. Now I'm sure that I'm going to be 
running my script with AutoHot QB2. And when I click on run or press F5, I will get whatever the script does. So in this case, you see that now I get <laughs> my name and it says your ages and it gives me the number. That's how you use, you set the variables using the column equals. And then later on to refer to the values, you just call the name of the variable without quotation marks. That's the reason why normal text needs quotation marks, because if you don't use the quotation marks, it is treated as a variable name by default. So now that you know how to set and retrieve the variables, let's take a look at what I mentioned. The name variable implies that I could change this without having to touch my code below. So right now I could say that instead of bias, let's say that I am Mac Allen's, <laughs> let's say. Now I'm American. So now that I do this, when I run my script, it's just going to go ahead and give me the updated information. And uh, let's say that I'm older. Let's say that I'm 56. Now, there you go. Now, the power of this is if you refer to the same variable multiple times in your script, you just have to change it in one location and everything else is changed automatically. You do not have to go and change every single one of the instances of your name. You just use a variable, have it in many places on your script, you make one change and it's updated everywhere else.